<laughs> How's everybody doing today? All right? I think we're, uh, you know, hopefully now we'll get all this rain out of our system. We can, you know, get back to normal. I know it's going to be, uh, going to be a while before you get back to normal with how much we had and obviously the thoughts are with a lot of the people out there that have been displaced and and uh you know something to that they got to fight through as far as moving forward so uh with that obviously uh guys uh you know kind of a recap of of what we did last week um you know i thought there were some very good things as i did the first two weeks uh we found a way to to do some things towards the end, I thought that was uh, you know really good, and, and I think really helped the psyche of our guys and understanding what it takes to to um, get you into a situation to win. Now let's go win it, and uh, so that was that that was good to see, and I and I really believe that now having you know even looked at it some more and dissected it, I really believe that that it truly was a whole team effort and, and a whole team win. I think there were some good things. Um, you know, we've got to get rid of some of the penalties that are, that are hurting us, yet we were able to overcome some offensively, which was, uh, you know, the first time I think in, in two years we've done that. So, um, but at the same time, you know, eliminate those, those unforced errors, you know, or something that, that we've got to get much better at. Um, you know, on the injury front, um, you know, Eric Williams will be out, our special teams guy. He'll be out probably for another three or four weeks. Um, you know, we came out of it, I think, fairly healthy. Um, Hansley and, and Lovett will be, you know, day to day to see how they can perform. And if they can't perform full go on Wednesday, they won't make the trip. Um, and uh, really, other than that, you know, we came out pretty good, your normal stiffness I think Bernard Blake might have a little shoulder um, looking at it uh, Jason Oden who was actually hurt a little bit in the last game didn't play as many reps but he, you know he he felt fine and so you know it's good to see that and Jordan Baden came back and and, and played okay um, you know we've got to really get him to play hard every down and, and not take downs off but uh, you know fought through some injury things so you know that was good to see um, you know, getting ready to play this ball game. Um, you know, uh, one of the things that I do know from being there is, is uh, you know, there is no letdown. I mean, obviously, people could point that you know they just had, uh, you know, a huge win, which they did over, uh, you know, at a, a nationally hyped game. But one of the things that that they do probably as good, well, they do as good as anybody in the country. It never matters about who you're playing. It's about you're really playing against yourself. It's about how you do every single day, every snap, uh, to get better. Um, they will use some of the things from that. Um, you know, I'm sure, you know, the numbers that were put up by by A and M and and by that quarterback. Wow, that guy. And uh, you know, they're going to use that as motivation to come back this week uh, and you know try to shut us out. And yet. You know, like tell our guys, it isn't about the mystique, it isn't about the history, it isn't about the tradition. Tradition, it's about an opportunity to measure yourself against the best. And I think in life, it's something all of us strive to do: is how do I measure up against the best of whatever that may be? And we're playing against the best. Um, they'll want to put a complete game together: offense, defense, and special teams. Um, and a dominant performance, and uh, you know that 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 was one of the things that was kind of neat being there, guys. Is is it didn't ever matter who the opponent was, because the the the, the important thing was how do you move forward, how do you get better, how do you perfect your craft, and um, you know these guys are going to come out ready to roll. The, well, the same thing. Yeah, I mean, no matter who we're playing, we need to get better at this. We need to get better at that, so that maybe you avoid some of that potential intimidation and fear that might. Yeah, happen. and and yet, like I tell our guys, it, and you know, you know, I'll 
tell them again. The only reason you should be scared is if you're not sure. And there's no reason to, to, to not be sure about what you're doing. And so it comes down to your preparation. It comes down to what do we do today? What do we do on this, in this period? What do we do in Red Area Skelly? What do we do in Skelly? What do we do in Team Force? What do we do in, in Teach? What do we do? And, and how do we prepare ourselves to put ourselves in a situation to go play hard and measure our abilities and measure who we are and what we're all about against the best. And, uh, you know, I think AJ's playing as good as anybody in the country. Uh, and, you know, guys, I'm kind of proud of that, to be honest with you. He plays the game the way it should be played, knows when to take his shots, knows when to take his check downs, has a true command now, is doing a lot of more check with me stuff based on what the defense has given him. And, and, you know, he's a guy, in my opinion, that is as good a player as there is in the country. Uh, and, and at his position probably does more for his team, you know, from an offensive standpoint as far as getting the people around him involved. And um, I think he really understands that. And I'm not real excited about being on the other side of the sideline, though, watching him. But uh, at the same time, um, you know, they're really doing a good job, as, as you could tell in the last ball game offensively, which, you know, uh, matched it score for score. And and it was uh, it was impressive to watch. Is that what's somewhat different about this game for you is that normally you won't have a vested interest in somebody on the other side. But AJ was somebody you kind of groomed and turned into that quarterback that helped that team win the national championship. Well, I probably adds a little more to it, doesn't it? You know, and, and a lot of those kids, a lot of the guys, um, you know, I probably did more to screw AJ up than I did to help him. But uh, it's great to see he's overcome what I gave him early and now is really playing good. It's really because, strange. Because yeah. of your involvement with all those guys in that offense. It, it is, and, and the coaches that are there, uh, the people in the organization that are there. Um, you know, I, it, it, it is. It, it, it is, and, and yet, and then I find myself looking at the wrong side of the film sometimes, you know, and how I, how I look at it, you know, I'm getting at. And, uh, but... You know, I'm I'm excited for our opportunity and, and the organization's opportunity to go see the Mecca and see what it's all about. You did mention that after the post game. You said you're going to a college football Mecca and you want your players to take that in. So how fine a line is that to enjoy the circumstance but focus on what you're actually down there to do? It's a business trip. Well, part of it is is not only just our players. I, I would say the majority of it, actually, is our whole organization to go out and see what it means to do your job, no matter what your job is, as good as it can. When you go through that stadium and you see how immaculate everything is, how the people who are taking the tickets take pride in what they do, how the people who are in the parking lots handle whatever their job is, uh, the people with game day operations. It is the best, and, and, and they take pride in what they do. And, and what I get to there is not allowing mediocrity in anything. And it doesn't matter what it is. And that's what I'm really kind of excited for, for a lot of people to see, uh, the way you guys are going to be taken care of. You know, the, as you go, I think you'll find, you know, from from that standpoint, you know what, you, you, you feel and you know that you're at some place special. And that's really what I'm looking to get out of it. But how do you keep your players from not getting lost and then focusing on, on the task? Of you know, the, because a lot of them came in and they're very wide eyed talking about going down there and playing that game. Yeah. And, and yet I think our approach and what we need to understand is, guys, who gets an opportunity to go match yourself against the best? Who, who y you can't say that every week. And, you know, as a competitor, you know, the guys that are afraid, I'll leave them home. I'll see it in their eyes. They aren't getting on the plane. I want the guys that are down there to compete every single down. 
and not worry about anything but how how they prepare and and their ability to do their job. That's what we're looking for. We're not going to go down and throw a bunch of tricks and, you know, that kind of stuff. No. We're going to go down and, and measure our program right now, and we'll get an opportunity now in a couple years to go back. So it's really kind of, to me, it's a little bit like finding a baseline, if that makes sense, and then let's see where we're at. Does, and, and look, I don't expect, I, I expect our guys to be excited, and they should. I mean, 102,000 people, you know, that's a season's worth in one game, right? And that's cool. You know, I mean, that's cool. And you should enjoy that. And you, and, and you know what? They deserve that. They deserve that because of what they have put in to this program, this town, and this university. So I'm excited for them in that regards. Um, you know, the speed of the game is going to hit them now. And the size of the game is going to hit them. Okay? But at the same time, it isn't about them. It's about us. And it's about how we go and perform on each and every play. And, and the measurement therein is, is what I'm excited about. Absolutely. But don't you, from your standpoint, need your team to play a complete game to make this a competitive contest? Oh, absolutely. All three phases. Yeah, all three phases. I mean, our special teams, guys, these guys have some creatures running up and down the field now on special teams. And our guys have been pretty darn good, haven't they? I mean, when you watch, you think about the improvement from a year ago as, as we talked early. But now... You know, we do a thing we call lions and gazelles. I mean, these lions and gazelles are real. So go match your energy, go match your effort, and go match everything you can against those lions and gazelles. And I think it should tell us something. And it should tell each guy a, a little bit about where they're at. Do you find it interesting? It was funny. Last week I read a story about how Saban was trying to get his team to approach Texas A&M. And I'd heard these words somewhere before, but he talked a lot about do your job. It's about us. It's not about them. I thought I'd heard them like last Monday <laughs> and a couple other times last year. Do you think that makes the same someone in it? Both coaches take the same approach week in, week out with their players. That it's not so much what you're going to see on film that they're going to do, it's what you do on the field. And he talked about that a lot with what they did and didn't do. Right. And, and, the plays we missed last week, was it them or was it us? Now, there may be some plays this week that was it them, maybe, because they've got some glass eaters. they got some fire breathers. That's, you know, that's, that's recruiting, right? But at the same time, let's, go, let's, let's not look at that as, as a negative towards us. L let's go out and play a physical Let's go out and play a fast tempo. Let's go out and, and play hard and have a good time. Okay, and I mean that. Enjoy the experience. That doesn't mean laugh, giggle. You know, I mean, it, 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 look, there's only, what, seven teams this year that get an opportunity to go play at Brian Denny Stadium? We're one of them. Man, that's an experience everybody will take with them for the rest of their life. And that's cool. You know, his, his, his attention to detail, he never wavers off course, yet he stays as current as anybody. You know, he doesn't sit in, he's always moving for what can we do to be better. And, and no matter what it is, there's always a review as of, of, of anything they do. What can we do better? How can we get better? But the process in which everything is detailed is, look, those guys know exactly what they're doing today in practice. And they know that they've got, they will compete or they won't be playing. Okay? They know on Tuesday exactly what is going to be installed, how it works. All right? 
Wednesday, Thursday. It, it's it's a detailed machine. They go in after third, you know, before Thursday's practice. They get the first aid inter introduced. Those guys can recite the first aid and not even have to call them in the huddle. They take such pride in their preparation and and to go dominate an opponent, not to just win, but to go dominate and go dominate every play. And Man, it's it's uh, it's fascinating, man. The, the the guy, he's he's something special. It, he comes across, you know, to a lot of people as a guy that's very much a control freak. I'm going to run everything. You, you make it sound like there's a lot of review going on where he's taking a lot of input from. Oh the, yeah, to, no to no. To keep to keep fresh, because sometimes a guy like that could just get to my way or the highway. Here's how we do it, and the game would eventually pass him by. I he's think, obviously not that way. I think look at how he's approached recruiting and everything that's ever been there. Always staying current. Always, a, you know, a step ahead. You know, always uh, from in the evaluation process through. Um, he is by no means a control freak. I, it, there's a lot of outside people that are just trying to pick and find out w whatever. No. The guy's detailed. He's a hard worker. And he wants you to be complete in what you do, in every aspect. Well, last time I checked, that's the blueprint for any organization, Fortune 500 company, <laughs> there is, right? Be detailed in everything you do, right? Work hard and be complete in what you do. Don't leave little things hanging out there. And within the organization, every part is important and he understands that. It doesn't matter who it is. It has relevance and importance for that place to be successful. And, you know, he does it like nobody else. You've been around a lot of great coaches. I have. Uh, it seems like though Nick probably there's, has had a bigger influence maybe than any of them. You know, is it's interesting. It's interesting because you take a little bit from everywhere. Uh, an old professor used to call it the cafeteria effect. You take a little bit here, a little bit there, you know, and then you put a meal together, right? And uh, Dr. Jim Wasson, love that guy. Um, but, um, you know, it, obviously the, the recent being there, you know, the latest, obviously some of that is the freshest. But the one thing that, that I do know is I cannot be Nick Saban. I, I can't. And nor can I be Pat Hill or John L. Smith or Dick Zorns or Cliff Heisel or Art Shell or whoever it may have been. I, I can't be that guy. Um, I've got to be myself. And what I have tried to do is import and impart a lot of the things that we did there and have done some other places and hopefully put my own personality on it and as to, you know, who I am and, and – what we're all about and uh, you know I think if you ask our kids they know how much I'm in it for them and uh, I think if you ask former players they'll tell you the same thing you know honestly it, it's like you mentioned it'll be a special trip for you to go back there but truth being told you won't really be able to enjoy much of it no you'll be looking at game day from the opposite side uh, I'm curious though what would you tell fans your Colorado State fans if they should go down there and try and experience and they're two days down in Tuscaloosa. Boy, that's a great question. You know, and I never – that may be a good one for my wife, uh, you know, because uh, I didn't get much of an opportunity to uh, see that other than in the bus ride and seeing that, that tailgate. I, I think, you know, that the, the walk uh, before the game as you're going by those statues and entering the front of Bryant Denny uh, – uh, that, that, that's a pretty cool deal, man. And, uh, you know, I think any of the barbecue, and you can get some right at those tents, you know, that are people that are there. And this being their first home game, you know, I expect a pretty good crowd and, and uh, you know, a lot of enthusiasm. What are the biggest differences you've noticed in two years just between CSU and all the rest? Game day or the way <laughs> guys carry themselves in the home? Um, we're getting there. We're getting there. And uh, there's a lot of factors that go into it. 
and uh, it isn't just uh, it isn't about just money that that isn't you know sometimes people just think you know it's the nice facilities and this and that it it isn't it's about how you approach every day and how anybody who touches the organization approaches every day and if you accept mediocrity go somewhere else because that's not acceptable and people don't cost and, and, and interaction and personal touch, that doesn't cost anything. That, that just means hard work. That means taking the extra step to do what it takes to be great. And um, I have seen a ton of turnaround here in, in the short time I've been here, um, in a lot of phases. And uh, I think the people who Try to take shortcuts. Maybe figure out I get a little impatient with that, you know. Uh, and uh, yet it isn't personal. Nothing's personal. All I expect is let's do our job as hard as we can and as good as we can, and then we'll let the chips fall from there. Is it, how do you sell this game to your players? I mean, obviously no team's invincible, but... This one's going to look as close to it as, as we've seen on film yet this year. I Here mean, he came out and he said, "Let's go down and shock the world." Is that the approach you want them to take? You know, let's. I mean, well, I guess. I, I don't think we're going to be scared. You know, I. I you know, they're, they're going to be. You know, wow, it's pretty cool. You know, you know, scared is when I used to. You know, nervous is when I used to play horse or pig with guys for money and not have the money in my pocket you know, that that you know that that puts some pressure on you know and you know what that's that's what we sh that's what you're doing man let's go yeah um, you know I think there's no way to simulate it, but there sure is a way to embrace it. And what a great deal. They came to Colorado State, and they get an opportunity to go play the best. That's it. Let's go. Can you talk a little bit about Shaquille Barrett. He was your Mountain West Player of the Week on special teams. Talk a little I mean, he's obviously a defensive star for you, but... You mentioned a little bit. It didn't take a playoff. Yeah. It paid off twice for you. Absolutely. And that's the mentality, guys. That that that's what I'm talking about. That there lies the difference between the program we're going to see and a lot of other programs. Is there is no playoff. There is no playoff in practice. Because you're either getting better or you're getting worse. There's no staying the same. And if I take days off, if I take plays off, what's that say about who I am and, and what kind of character I, I have? You know, uh, you know, you think of it as, you know, character is something that happens when no one's looking. Okay, a lot of times guys take plays off because they're in the middle of it, right? And, oh, you know what, I'm not going to get caught for this. I'm going to catch a little breeze, breather. Well, that's kind of defines a lot about the guy. And I thought Shaq, I think defensively as a whole, you know, there were some guys that took some plays off. There were some guys that didn't do the exact technique that needed to stop that triple option. Uh, the, the big trap that they hit, you know, guy's supposed to come under, you know, we, we, we hit, played it perfect three other times. No game. The one time we didn't come under, you know, the one time the backer then went, over, went the wrong way over the top, Guess what? The guy went and hit his head on the goalpost. That was the only thing that stopped him on that was the goalpost. And if he just run into the goalpost, he'd still be running. Okay, but there again, that's what I'm talking about. But back to Shaq. I mean, did it show you a development in his game from since you first got? You know, he he's the guy. I and even last year when he was injured, I thought played his tail off and and did a lot in a lot of things. I would like to see him take. More initiative is, I guess, is maybe the word 
um, to help this defense even from a vocal standpoint. But his play, he, you know what I tell him? Be proud of what you put on film, right? He's a guy that you can honestly say most of the time, a, a high majority of the time, can actually look at it and his teammates can look at it and say, you know what, that guy should be proud of his play because he played hard. It's kind of tell, telling, too, that it was, on, of all things, a field goal, field goal defense, PAT defense. That's where, historically, if a guy is yeah. going to take a play off, that's where it's going to be. You watch an NFL game and a lot of those guys just kind of stand there and throw their arm up. <laughs> you know, to have him go that hard in that situation. <laughs> you know, I was a special teams coordinator. The first thing I went to was field goal, PAT, field goal, and field goal block. And what the field goal block told you about a team is their true character and how hard they play. That's the first thing we used to go to. And, and it really says a lot about a football team, a lot about a culture on a what a lot of people think is an in, insignificant play. But the teams that go as hard on that one as they do on everything else, you know what, they got something to them. And that's kind of what I'm getting at. I, I see where we're going as a program. And, you know, you bring that up, that, that's absolutely correct. And, uh, you know, you show me those ones that take those plays off, it's a pretty good chance that they're going to take other plays off too, and it says a lot about who they are. You mentioned recruiting and what Saban does. And you talked before about CU has Pac-12 players. Do you guys think he's the best the SEC? Is that no one guy taking any single playoff? That's right. And, and uh, you know, all our guys, you know, they, they're, they're not playing this game and they're not playing the game of football thinking that they're any worse than anybody else. And, uh, you know, they're going to run into some big guys now that run really fast and hit really hard and play the game in a violent and purposeful way. Last week you guys played Cal Poly and they're FCS. Not, you guys are both FCS this week, but you saw a lot of Cal Poly players on the field injured. Are you, you said that your players are not scared, but are you a little bit worried for them? They're bigger, faster, stronger, and they play with this violent violence that you just I, 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 I say match the intensity. Um, no. I mean, I'm not. I mean, any time you go play anybody, you know, you got a chance. I mean, and if you're worried about that, again, just stay here and watch it on TV. Yeah, honestly, you've seen it from the other side when teams go in, and there's, you know, like you said, 102, and you, you let your players be looking around. How long does that generally last for? It sinks in, it's game time. Dep depends the team. <laughs> okay, your team. How long do they have? I tell you what. Yeah, I, I'll tell them this. When they when they hear Bear Bryant's voice over the uh, on the jumbotrons, and they show the great plays in the history, really, of of what is Alabama football. Okay, take a minute and look at it. And, and realize, yeah, you are at a place. Now, let's go get back in the, let's talk about our first date. Let's talk about our, our musts. Let's talk about the keys to the game. And let's go out and play. I assume most places you don't want the players to stare at the jumbo drums. So is this one of the well, when, when, let me tell you something. When that guy's voice, it's kind of like they're, they're, it, it's, it's a separate being that, that kind of goes through that stadium and and it is uh it makes my hair stand up on on my arm right now and even having been in however many games there that something pretty special about it yeah, you you say about it's hard to avoid the ghosts in that place well and that's what i yeah. you know that's the one thing i think our guys like i talked about is and and everybody that goes on the trip don't get caught up in the history the mystique the all of that, it's hard not to. Um, that's part of the home field advantage. Um, yet, uh, you know, 
enjoy it, respect it, respect it, but don't fear it. Jim, you talked about the Knicks' ability to evolve and stay ahead of things. Yeah. Is that going to enable them to have a chance to continue this on for the foreseeable future? Yeah, I, it, it is. And, and I think, you know, when, when you look at uh, what is called dynasties, mm -hmm. and, and yet I, I love the way he approaches the dynasties because each team is different. You know, there is no dynasty. The, the teams that won before, they, they, they did it. The guys who are there right now did not do it, even though they might have been part of that team. But what are you going to do to stamp your name in that dynasty and really it's never about defending a national championship but you don't that that was none of those guys are there you know a lot of those guys are gone it's now what do you do this year in preparation to win one or to win an SEC championship to win every home game you know whatever that is um, I think it's pretty fascinating in how he keeps everybody grounded and focused, you know, on every day. When you look back you get to, for your team to accomplish all these things you want them to respect it, not fear it, how important was it for you to get confidence? A, a, a guy like Garrett Grace uh, woke it to get some confidence coming into this game to have something positive to build on as you walk into this. No doubt it's huge. I think I said it after the game, guys. It, we needed that. There, there is no doubt. We needed that. But I will tell you this. I knew where we were at when I saw the hurt and heard the silence after those two losses. When, before I'm not sure they ever recognized that they could have won them or should have won them, whatever, however do you want to say all that. You know what, it, it's, it shows me where we're headed. And, and that, to me, means a lot. What does it mean to you to be the coach at this point you guys down here? I'm excited about it. I mean, I really, I, I you know, and, but as I've said, this has nothing to do with me. It has nothing to do with the fact I was there. It has to do with what it's going to do for our players, what it's going to do for our organization. And, uh, you know, go, let, let, let's go measure ourselves. And then let's let's evaluate and, and move forward because guys, we've got a long season ahead of us. You know, a long season ahead of us, and we haven't even touched into conference play yet. So um, it's going to be another learning tool for us. We're going to come back and evaluate it. We're going to go move on to the next one, and you know, right now it's about preparing for this one. And, and that's the way we've got to go. When I talked to Clint Oldenburg earlier in the year, he said that this has the potential to be a turning point game. He played in 2004, the last time CSU played against the number one team in uh, USC. They were beaten pretty handily, but he said that it's all about what you take from the game, what you can learn. Do you believe that's true? Absolutely. There's no doubt in my mind. And uh, you, you Look, they won't play against a team that I don't that is this big, this fast. You know, that it, it's just the way it is. Any team can beat a team on any given day. I mean, that that's been you know, I mean that's the age old deal, right? Now, what you take from it in understanding how hard they play the game too, and did you match the intensity, or are you willing to match the intensity? He's going to say a lot about your character and, and, and your will to win. And uh, so I think what you just said makes a ton of sense from a measuring standpoint. Is it safe to say, though, of all the teams in the country that you could, everybody, you always hope for those upsets. You work on you know, Michigan barely hit by Akron the other day. That the way that Alabama team is built, they're probably less likely to be knocked off by somebody than maybe any other team in the country. Yeah. You've said no. about how they prepare, how they, they there, there's no doubt in my mind. And yet, you know, that's a Michigan team I know a year ago. That what, what did they beat? The Alabama beat them 40 something to not very much, you know? Um, 
you know, we're playing the best, guys. Are you happy that it's more down to the beginning of the season, or would you rather have this game be, you know, towards the end when you have a couple more wins under your belt? Sure. Um, you know, I'm, 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 I'm glad for the opportunity wherever it fits. I really am, and and probably like it more towards the front than the back because we got some, you know, we've got some rivalry things we've got to take care of towards the back and in and uh, in the middle of our conference play. So, you know, I think, you know, the fact it's on the 21st night of September, one of the greatest songs Earth, Wind, and Fire has ever produced. All right, I'm good with that. And it is. It's on the iPod. Plays a lot, as a matter of fact. Denver baseball. Yes, that's right. Uh, Jim, you talk about the SEC's defensive line being maybe the biggest advantage. Yeah. Comparing around, being around the country. What do you see with Alabama? Just, they're they're, they're just, the yeah, they're, they're, they play with such great technique and discipline and assignment. I mean, their assignment, you know, and, and we're talking up front. They know which guy they've got to control to let the other guys make plays, okay? Their ability to transition from run to pass is something you don't see from a lot of guys. And obviously their sheer strength and size, but the way they snap and control blockers, I mean, our offensive line has, they will not go through anybody that is that violent with their hands and that disciplined in their gaps, which makes their pad level and steps have to be that much more precise. Speaking of defense line, is, is that group for you one of the most biggest areas of improvement you've seen on this team? I think no doubt, and yet they still need to get a ton better. But we've got some bodies there. You know, we've we've got some choices. I think you see how we're kind of running some guys through and and trying to keep them fresh and and. Uh, you know, if, if they're not controlled in their gap, these guys got some backs that can not only hit it, but can finish it. And so we have our, you know, we, we've got to be able to, to be gap disciplined and then and, and wrap up in the tac in tackling, so. But is it just depth that's I, made your defensive line better, or have you seen players getting better to get it? That and competition breeds consistency at every spot. And these guys are starting to see, you know what, it isn't just my right to be able to play. I've got to produce to get those valuable snaps. And it, it, it's one of those areas we've, we've become a little better at and, and we'll continue to get better at because we've got some good young guys I, I really, I, I think that's going to be a bright spot for us in the future. Are there players that you've seen that you would note as, as made great strides in the way? You know, I think, uh, you know, Calvin Tonga in spurts has has done an outstanding job. I'd love to see his consistency play. You know, the the way uh, the way he can. But I've been really happy with him. I think, you know, Lorian King has has made some real strides. Um, you know, Terry Jackson, um, you know, if we can get him to, to be precise every down, you know, he's a guy that's got some explosion and quickness and can make some plays for you. Um, you know, Qualic's done a guy stepped up, man. He's starting to learn how to play with some pad level and, and use his body length to his advantage. Still gets stuck on some blocks here and there, but, but he's, he's grown up. Um, you know, and I'm sure I'm missing some guys. You know, Ellie plays his tail off. Sometimes um, maybe a little out of control. <laughs> but he does bring an energy to those guys, and, and I kind of like to see that. But you, you talk to yourself about how you catch yourself wanting to watch the other side sometimes watching film this week. Like, is there a temptation to maybe show your team the other sides? Show your offensive linemen how their offensive linemen do it? Show your D-linemen how their D-linemen do. Definitely, and it's something we've done uh, We've done in the offseason. It's something we say this is how it's supposed to be done, and, and at this speed 
this tempo and uh, with this kind of uh, violent nature, um, it's hard to duplicate, man. <laughs> it's hard to duplicate, but um, let's go measure ourselves. So will you do any of that this week? Oh, yeah. Show, show your own line, their own line. Yeah, and they, and, and, and just their defense. You know, they're in cut ups already. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. I mean, they, they should see what it is and, and uh, yeah. And or year around, have your guys seen more film on Alabama because of your association I, with the program I, and your respect for how they yeah, do it? Yeah, I think naturally, I think, yeah, absolutely. Uh, like when you're demonstrating yeah. in the spring or. You hit it on the head. So they've, they've seen it. Uh, now let's go emulate it. Thanks, guys. Thank you. And thanks for the uh, tips. You want some pizza over there? Well, of course I do. I want to make sure you thought. Talk about how this team should approach this game. Uh, you know, I think Coach Mack uh, <clears throat> probably probably uh, touched on it, but uh, nobody's expecting anything from us um, outside of us, really. Um, so there's there should be no reason to go in tight and nervous, and and you know it's good to be nervous, but mm -hmm. go in, uh, you just play the game. It's football. It's in a uh, you know bigger bigger arena, uh, number one team in the nation. So nobody's expecting anything from you, so you might as well go out and, and play with and, and hold nothing back. What is it? What part of this game are you most excited about? Is it playing fast? Is it playing in a hollow ground? What is it? Well, I've always been the guy that's um, at the smaller school, and and there's always speculation about how guys at smaller schools play against bigger schools. Um, so I'm I'm anxious to see what it's like playing against the best players and. And anxious to go against the best competition because I, you know, I, I like playing under pressure situations and, and you know playing against the number one team in the nation. I think that's about as pressure filled as it gets. You're from Texas, so you grew up in the football culture in the South, and it's huge. Mm -hmm. um, does that help you, you know, kind of tell the guys what to expect from Alabama, which is another big football team? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I spent many times going, many Saturdays going to Kyle Field watching the Aggies play, and been down to Texas Tech watching them play a lot, and. And you know this would be a you know very similar to what you see at Texas A&M. So I know what to expect. Um, 
you know, I, I don't think it's going to be a shock to any of my other teammates. They've seen it on TV. They know, you know, you know, you know what it's going to be like. Uh, you know, but we've got to be able to handle the noise because that's going to be pretty loud. Um, so I think that'll be one of the biggest issues. But you know, we're, we're excited about it. I'm really looking forward to to being able to go out there and play. Do you get to go into this game maybe more relaxed than any other game? Because like you said, nobody expects anything. You got nothing to lose. Well, I think we should. Uh, me personally, I won't. I get nervous about you know a lift in the morning. So <laughs> I'm going to be. I might you know throw a couple times, but um, yeah, I don't. There's no reason to be all uptight and and. Uh, Nervous about it because it's nobody's expecting anything big from you. Coach talks about this being in his mind as sort of a baseline indicator of where your program's at and where you want to be. And he's curious to see where you're at now and where you'll be when you say playing two, four, six years down, four, six years down the road, whenever the next game ends up. Where do you anticipate you're going to find out you guys are right now? You know, I, I'm not going to speculate anything. I'm just excited about the opportunity. You know. Anytime you want to find out where your program is or how you're doing against something, you always kind of compare it to the best, and that's what we're fixing to do on Saturday. So I think you know, going out and playing against the best team in the nation, that's the that's the only way to be able to tell you know how you're how you're stacking up against you know what what, what whatever the best is in in the, in the entire country. So, uh, like I said, we're really excited about the opportunity. Is there a lot of expectation on the form of the players? I mean, since this game was announced, everybody's been talking about it. I know you guys have to focus on the next game, the next game, but what's it like now that this week is here? People have been talking about this since this game was announced in the middle of last season. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm very excited. Um, you know, I've had it on my calendar for a really long time, and now it's finally here, so it's kind of surreal. But, um, you know, I started watching a little film last night. Um, just really excited about it. You know, it's going to take a lot of preparation uh, on my part as well as my teammates um, to be able to go in there and, and move the ball, do some things that we want to do. So, um, very exciting time. We're, we're glad it's here. What are the specific things you see when you watch film on them? Is it that they're just these great athletes, or is it the way they their technique, how they do things? What what jumps out at you the most? Well, I mean, they are great athletes. They're, they're big, strong players. Um, but what I notice, especially on the defensive line, is they they're able to rotate a lot of guys very frequently. Um, so they keep you know fresh players in. Um, players that are, you know, equally e equally capable, I think. Um, so that's that's kind of a hurdle we'll have to get over. Um, being able to, uh, you know, uh, keep going while they have, you know, guys who have had a breather for the past couple of plays. So, um, but yeah, great players. Um, it's gonna be it's gonna be a challenge. How important was it for you guys to get some confidence going into this game and win last week? See Garrett play well. Yeah. Chris came back to look more like the back. Of you got some balance to your offense. Yeah. How important was that really for you guys moving forward? Well, that win couldn't have come at a better time. Um, <clears throat> you know, we needed we needed one, we needed three. I'll tell you that. <laughs> That's how we want it to be. Um, but it's good to have that one before you go into a game like this um, to give you some confidence, give you some momentum going into a place like this. You guys had some of that game, some emotional. You played emotionally uh, this last Saturday. Mac only said that you guys need to match that intensity this week. Uh, you know, just get some excitement. Uh, when you make a play, get excited with your teammates. Um, you know, we're all working together, so might as well have fun doing it. Um, you, you know, emotion kind of ties with having fun. So, um, you know, if we make plays, get excited about it. Get with your teammates. Um, you know, really enjoy the experience. Coach talks a lot about, about you, about what you do, not what they do. Is this going to be the ultimate test of that? Yeah, definitely. If we go in and execute, um, I think we could, we, we could be able to move the ball pretty well. Um, but, you know, we had a couple times this last weekend where we were kind of shooting ourselves in the foot. Uh, nothing they did. Uh, it was stuff we did, penalties, um, you know, kind of uh, things that, that aren't helping us out. So uh, if we can eliminate those, I think we'll have a, a good shot. Do you think you guys have to play perfect this week, though? Uh, you know, it's the number one team in the nation, so you got to play well. you got to play well enough to beat them. So um, I think that's as easy as it gets, I think. Weston, they talk about the SEC having an advantage on the defensive line. They always bring that up as maybe the one thing that sets them apart from the Big 12, Pac-12, Pac Pac whatever. Do you see that on film? Have you seen that? I mean, you grew up watching the Big 12, obviously. Right. Um, like I said, they, you know, they're able to rotate um, pretty frequently, which is something you don't see in our conference. Um, 
uh, yeah, I was trying to get a good idea of you know who their best players were up front, and there was never they were never in more than one play at a time. It seemed like to be able to get some good film on them, um, and they all they all were able to to contribute. Um, so yeah, I mean that's they're able to have you know they have a lot of depth at the defensive position, defensive line position, um, a lot of big, athletic, strong guys. Um, so yeah, I think that's uh, you know a big big time SEC thing. Oh, I have no idea. Seven, sixty something thousand, maybe. I don't know. This would be a little more than that, I think. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Yeah. yeah. I'm excited about it. That's what that's what you live for. That's what you play football for. So. It's like Jim said. It's hard for you to walk in that stadium and not feel the ghosts mm. of that program. How long do you guys think? Honestly, you got to enjoy that stuff. How long do you give yourself to take it in and then move on to? You know, I don't think of it, I, for me personally, I don't think of it as going in and just taking it all in as an experience. I just take it as we're going to play a game and compete against the number one team, and you just take it in while you're playing. So, um, you know, if some guys want to do that, just get it over with before we t take the field. So um, I'm sure that, that that'll be the case with some people. But and you're telling us you pretty much grew up before every game. Anyway, so well, uh, this one I can probably – Say there's probably a ninety percent chance yeah. of rain. Most so games. yeah, seventy percent chance. Yeah, I'd, I'd say so. Yeah. How do you guys go in and prepare for the noise that you're gonna have? Uh, well, we simulated in the indoor. We got they, they play the music pretty or uh, crowd noise pretty loud, um, and we work on our silent count. Um, obviously, it's not the equivalent to you know hundred plus thousand people, but. Um, we're able to work on our silent count, um, get all our offensive line uh, gelling together on that, get quarterbacks timing right, um, and, and we'll, I'm sure we'll get that early on in the week. Yeah, but the if players, if they're dinged a little bit, they'll feel a lot better this week. A lot of players want to make this trip. I think so. I, I personally do. Uh, you know, yesterday I didn't feel very good physically, but. Uh, you know, I got a second pair of legs under me today, and I feel pretty good. So I'm, I'm ready for it. It'll be a really exciting time. Uh, you know, it's um, one I've had circled for a while, and I'm really excited about the opportunity. Yeah, good. Yeah. Thanks, Weston. Yep. <coughs> Just go so pick so a pizza of your choice. Pizza. Oh, okay. okay. Um, you know, I'm excited. Number one team in the country. And I've been there before in 2010 with my brother playing for Auburn, and it's crazy loud. Like, you can't even talk to the person next to you. So, you know, I'm going to enjoy as much as I can while I'm out there. What did your brother kind of told you about playing in the Well, you know, that, that was their main rivalry, the Iron Bowl. So, it's just like, it's going to be a tough one. Like, you're going to have to fight to the end, and you got to expect to play for four quarters. Communication with some of these DBs that have a little trouble with well, I mean, today in practice, we're just going to try to work our hand signals and I guess like try not to talk as much and just use as many hand signals as we can and just communicate that by uh, hand signals. You had a, uh, Shaquille Barrett was in the Mountain West player of the week. Not, he's a good defensive player for you, obviously, but what he did on special teams, was it? how does it stand with your team, with, with you as a team? to see what he's doing in his quote-unquote extra duty. I mean, that's that's still a defensive play, you know. He was working very hard to block that field goal, and he got the job done. So, I mean, it's just showing that he's not giving up on the play. Like, usually people, it's a field goal, so, like, they won't go as hard. And he's just keeping that keeping the energy going and trying to make a play. What's that do to the rest of the team when you guys all see that? You see, here's your, your starting linebacker, one of your best defenders, the easiest play for him in a game to take off. He goes and does that. Well, it just shows you how much that game meant to him and how important that game was to win. And just him not taking the playoff has just made everybody excited on the sideline. You know, a lot of celebration going on. And 
It was just, it was, it was great. Do you think people saw it that way too? That that if if there was ever a guy and a play that he could take off, this would be the guy and this would be the play. Well, I'm I'm pretty sure like people, were, I don't know if they were counting him to make that play, but I mean, he did it, so he gave gave the people something to see. How do you game plan for this? I know obviously you'll go into sometimes you look at a team where they're a good running team or the quarterback's pretty good. Yeah. You're going to face a team where the quarterback's one of the best in the nation, the tailback's really fast, yeah. they have skill on the outside. Do you approach this team differently? Does it have to be the whole picture? You can't really focus on one thing? Oh, yeah. I mean, they're a pretty balanced team, so overall we're just going to have to put more preparation and filming and going harder at practice and just taking it personal, like, have it mean something to you, like, to study as best you can. What is it you see on Alabama that jumps out at you when you watch Alabama? We only got to watch one game versus Texas A&M, and, like, just the, the speed they have is, is crazy. Now they have, like, three different running backs that played. All their receivers were fast, and they're just big, too, so. And and what about McCarron? McCarron, um, yeah, he's, like, Sitting in the pocket, just I guess his O line just improved from the first game because he was just sitting in the pocket. You know, sometimes he had to scramble, kept his eyes down the field, and made a good throw. So, going to be one of the best quarterbacks we play. He's one of the most accurate quarterbacks. That changed the way you have to play back then. Well, your coverage has to be very tight, and you know you have to compete with the receivers and you know just go all out and try to win that down. Um, I'm not sure, but I mean, we're going to try to. <laughs> what do you think needs to happen for you guys to get a good vibe early on in this game? Well, we have to get a couple three and outs. We're going to have to make some big plays, some turnovers. We're going to have to get turnovers in this type of game. Mm -hmm. And we're just going to have to play fast like we've been doing and everybody getting to the ball and just competing. In talking to your brother, what? They don't have they don't have many mistakes. I mean, offensively, defensively, they're getting the ball. You know, the special teams were very good the first game, so it's just a I mean, a sound team that's just fundamental. Can you win this game? I believe we can. You know, we're going to go in it expecting to win. You know, a lot of people won't uh, believe in us, but we'll believe in that locker room. Have you heard anything on campus yet? Has anybody said anything to you? Well, this girl in my class did, but yeah. she, what? she didn't believe we can win, so <laughs> I'll just ignore her. Anything else? But, I mean, really, is that there's no – if you're going to be a – if you're the team we think you want to be, you can't go into this game thinking in another way, can you? No, there has to be no doubt. You can't go in there scared because yeah. if one person plays scared, then that that can change the whole game. So everybody has to um, focus in on what they're, they're supposed to do and just go out there and have fun and compete. Have you guys said they look at it as you guys don't have anything to believe and how they don't have everything? Is that how you see it? I don't. I see it as another football game. You know, they're human just like us. They practice and put pads on just like us. So I just see it as another football game. You did say you, you do plan on kind of taking it all in. How long do you give yourself a chance to do that before <laughs> you know it's got to get down to game time? I mean, just like when we first get there, just walking on the field, you know, getting a look around, I, how big the stadium is. And after that, we'll go back in the locker room and it's focus. When, when you went there to watch your brother, were you on the sideline or were you up in the stands? Or? I was in the stands, like the nosebleeds, surrounded by all their fans. <laughs> <laughs> it was. Crazy. That was what, 2010? 2010, yep. For the Iron Bowl? Yep. Did you need to for Yes, sir. So Had my armor sweater really on. Nah. <laughs> 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 nope. How, just, as somebody who grew up around that whole SEC and Steve, yep. what's that like to get a chance to go test yourself against that? You know, I grew up as a Florida Gators fan, and, like, the SEC overall is just a powerhouse, and, you know, they dominate everything, like other conferences. So, like, finally get it, I finally get to play myself. So, it's going to be big, and, you know, I'm definitely going to try to have fun as much as I can. But overall, just trying to play a good game. 
if things don't start off for you guys as you want them to, how are you going to keep your morale up throughout the whole game? You said you're going to have to be ready to play four quarters. Um, how are you going to do that mentally if it doesn't start out for you? Well, on the sideline, the leaders will have to step up and, like, talk to the team, let them know, like, it's four quarters of football and, like, one quarter doesn't determine the whole game. Thank you. Thanks, Shaq. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Thank you, Will. Look at